So good morning all. Myself, Dr. Manish Rajwani. I'm associate professor in dermatology. So we have already, I think, covered few topics before. So, आप लोगों ने अटेंड किए हैं ना पहले लेक्चर्स? कौन-कौन से टॉपिक्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड? जोर से बोलो, नाम-नाम तो बोलो। सोरियासिस वी लास्ट टाइम आई थिंक इट वाज सोरियासिस। देन विटलाइगो तुम उसे बताओ कौन से टॉपिक हो गए हैं तो हमें पता लगे कि हम उसको रिपीट नहीं करें एक ने हो गया एक ने विटलाइगो सोरियासिस इनिशियल टॉपिक्स के भी इस फिनिश व्हाट अबाउट पेडिकुलोसिस पेडिकुलोसिस डन हाँ सो पेडिकुलोसिस आल्सो डन एंड इनिशियल लेक्चर्स ऑन स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ स्किन एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ स्किन ऑलरेडी कवर्ड so today we'll be discussing lichen planus. It's another important uh, uh, diagnosis or a condition that we usually face in day-to-day -day practice in dermatology. So what exactly is lichen planus? So we'll cover all these topics, the headings in lichen planus. So coming to the definition of lichen planus, it's a common, so each and every term is important in definition. So it's a common, common means, uh, it's a common inflammatory disorder of skin characterized clinically by distinctive violaceous. So violaceous is a very important term. So in these lesions, you will find the color is little violaceous. Flat topped, this is another important criteria of diagnosing. It's flat topped. Usually papules are little mountain shaped or bumped up. This is flat on the top like a valley. And then mostly papular lesions, sometimes the papules they coalize to form plaques and histologically by band of lymphocytic infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction. So this is beyond your comprehension, but it's very important diagnostic finding. So we'll find the lymphocytic infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction. So what is the etiology of lichen planus? So most of the diseases, the exact etiopathogenesis or etiology is still not discovered or we are not able to pinpoint what exactly single etiopathological factor is there. So once there is no single etiological factor, we have a list of factors. So sometimes this and sometimes that. Come. So exact cause is unknown, probably immunological mediated. So genetic predisposition is there and these are the factors which are found to be much more common in cases of lichen planus. HLA B7, DR1 and DR10 is common. What are the associations of lichen planus? So once you find a case of lichen planus, there is high probability that other findings may be present. So systemic, there may be ulcerative colitis, then skin-wise alopecia areata, vitiligo, hepatitis and primary biliary cirrhosis. So nowadays we see that lichen planus is associated with hepatitis, mainly hepatitis C, so which is not that common in India, but usually in regions where hepatitis C is much more common, the preposition or preponderance of lichen planus is much more. Then certain drugs also are responsible for the causation of lichen planus. These are NSAIDs, chloroquine, SE inhibitors, hypoglycemic and nickel sensitivity is seen in oral lichen planus. So orally we find lesions sometimes uh, it's a common uh, presentation usually in a case of lichen planus we have to rule out any oral lesion. So three things are important in most of the cases in dermatology. First of all just examine the patient from the scalp to the toe then oral lesions, mucosal lesions are very important. Rule out if there is any oral mucosal involvement or genital mucosal involvement and nails are very important. So many diseases they cover the three things. So always examine the nails, oral mucosa and the body completely. So usually we see certain cases of lichen planus which are associated with nickel hypersensitivity. So sometimes this amalgam is there, dental amalgam which leads to formation of lichen planus in the adjoining area. So what are the clinical features in cases of lichen planus? The lichen planus can involve skin, mucous membrane, genitalia, that is the mucous membrane of genitalia, nails and scalp. So accordingly it is 
divided into many types of lichen planus that will uh, will go through associated with pruritus so another important feature is pruritus itching is very important aage baithe first row mein baitho itching is an important factor in most of the dermatological entities so itching is one of the most common factor in dermatology aap khujli ho rahi hai ye sare patient mostly they will say and lichen planus is one of them then associated commonly affects the young adults men and female equal affected and various clinical types are seen that will discuss so characteristic papules and plaques of lichen planus so it's violaceous as we already read in definition this is very important factor or uh, clinically clinching uh, factor that is violaceous appearance of the lichen and there are certain entities in dermatology where the lichen appears blue so what all lichens can appear blue so any lichen that covers the that is present in the dermal part of the skin they appear little bluish so blue nevus are there and certain entities like mongolian spot nevus of ota ito that you'll see in clinical dermatology when you come to the opds shiny flat topped is another factor these are flat topped shiny polygonal varying in size from 1 mm to greater than 1 cm in diameter may be discrete or arranged in groups of lines or circles another classical finding is wickham stria so wickham stria is a lace like pattern that we see in the flat top lesions so that you'll only appreciate when you see the lesions of lichen planus in your clinical posting so it's a fine criss cross white lines made prominent by the oil application and kibner phenomenon that we have already discussed in many entities that we have done before what is kibnerization kya hota hai kibner kibner phenomenon vitiligo mein bhi tha wo likha hua hai yahan par padh ke hi bol do development of lesions in previously normal skin that has been subjected to trauma that means if patient is suffering from one dermatological disease or skin disease if there is trauma at some other part of the body the same disease will appear in that trauma part that is that is kibnerization so this is common in vitiligo in vitiligo case if there is any trauma the lesion traumatic lesion will heal with hypopigmentation or depigmentation similarly in cases of lichen planus if there is any trauma or scratch there is appearance of the lichen planus lesions so this is a common phenomenon in dermatology certain diseases not all of them some diseases like even infections are there so there are many types of kibner phenomena that will not go into details so this is a case of clinic classical lichen planus so alaceous flat top papules are there So this is as the picture. You can see the lesions are little violaceous and flat top. These two important things are there. The papular lesions are there, and we come try. You will find when you magnify the lesion or put oil over the lesion. So you will find a try a fine reticulate pattern is there. Now there, sit down. Go on. Now there, rose line. Now there, sit down. First row. So lesions are bit shiny, flat topped, violaceous. This is a single lesion of lichen planus. So it's violaceous as the color. I think you are able to appreciate the color in this photograph. It's flat topped. Now the types of lichen planus. There are many types of lichen planus. We'll just go through the types. We'll not go into details of these. even if you remember lichen planus what is the common presentation that is more than enough so acute widespread involves flexor aspect of the wrist forearm shins ankles dorsa of feet and anterior thighs and flanks so this is a acute variety or what we call is generalized lichen planus so suddenly there is crop of similar lesions all over the body acute means it erupts suddenly all over the body so this is extensive lichen planus or disseminated lichen planus or generalized lichen planus 
Then chronic localized form of lichen planus, usually you'll find such lesions around the ankle and wrist region where the patient continues scratching and the lesion, the preponderance is over these regions. <coughs> Hypertrophic as the name suggests, it is hypertrophied lesion. Similar lesion, violaceous flat top, but much more elevated. Extensor surface of lower extremity. So these are the common sites where you'll find such types of lesion. All of these are lichen planus lesions. Actinic lichen planus. So this classification is according to the, as the name suggests, actinic means. What does the actinic word represent? Actinic. बोलो कुछ गलत होगा और क्या होगा आपसे एक्सपेक्ट नहीं कर रहे हैं पर ये सारे टर्म्स हैं इफ यू नो दैट टर्म विल बी एबल टू रिमेंबर द टाइप्स ऑफ लाइक एंड इजीली एक्टेनिक मीन सन इंड्यूस्ड सो इवन सन इंड्यूस्ड लाइक एंड प्लेनस यूजली विल बी ओवर द एक्सपोज पार्ट ओवर द फेस एंड अदर एक्सपोज रीजन ऑफ द बॉडी सो न्यूमिलर पैच इज विद हाइपर पिगमेंटेड जोन सराउंडिंग हाइपर पिगमेंटेड सेंटर so it will be hyperpigmented or violaceous as the name suggests and there will be a ring of hypopigmentation all around so this is a classical form of lichen planus induced by the sun then lichen planus pigmentosus diffuse macular slate gray or gray or brownish pigmentation of the face neck upper limb so this these lesions are not palpable they are just pigmented so just discoloration is there but the histopathology is that of lichen planus so these are the types various types of the same condition so this is acute widespread lichen planus so you can see multiple violaceous flat top lesions it's a shower of similar lesions over the dorsa of the hand and this limbs multiple violaceous lesions you can see flat top but multiple it's acute case widespread lesions appeared within a few days or few weeks over the trunk para umbilical region the most important clinching part is the violaceous appearance of the lesion similar lesions can be there in so many other skin conditions even dermatitis you will find even psoriasis you will find such condition widespread acute cases of psoriasis also present with multiple lesions but then they are what is the criteria of diagnosing psoriasis typical lesions of psoriasis last one is psoriasis ka aapka topic thoda bahut silvery scales are there not silvery patches plaques are there it's not a patch plaque means it is palpable it's erythematous plaque with silvery white scaling so scales are there usually in lichen planus we don't find scales it's violaceous flat topped the psoriasis is usually scaly what are the exact location in cases of psoriasis सूर्यासिस कहाँ पे ज्यादा मिलने के चांसेस है स्कैल्प वन इज स्कैल्प यूजली इट स्टार्ट्स विथ स्कैल्प ब्लैक दैट इज अ कॉमन प्रेजेंटेशन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉमनेस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन देर आर सो मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ सूर्यासिस आल्सो। वन इज स्कैल्प देन एक्सटेंसर्स ऑफ द लिम्स एक्सटेंसर्स यू विल फाइंड इन द एक्सटेंसर्स एल्बोज नीज वेर एज Lichen planus is opposite. You will find on the volar aspect. You will find on the wrist, but in the flexural aspect, flexures and the psoriasis is bit opposite. You will find extensors involvement is much more common than the flexure one. Once it is widespread or acute, then it will cover all over the body, whether it is it is flexures or extensors. So, what classical finding you will get? You are getting in this picture. we just went through this term multiple lesions are there violaceous papular lesions flat topped you can find a lesion of kepnerization a linear plaque or linear lesion of so this lichen planus is there so this is one of the 
factors which will help you in the diagnosis of certain lesions where kibnerization is much more common than other skin diseases. So, you have seen so many multiple patches, papules, a little bit of violations and kibnerization. So, it's easy to diagnose if you know that it is a common skin disease where kibnerization is common. Another variety is hypertrophic variety. As the name suggests, hypertrophy means it's a hypertrophic क्या होता है? ये तो सारे English terms हैं that we use. From the name you can just make out how the lesion will be. Hypertrophic it's not that flat top and smaller papules. It's a more of a papulonodular lesions. So hyperpigmented nodules and plaques over the shin. One one common finding is that such lesions are much more common over the shin. Then this is actinic lichen planus. So you'll find actinic lichen planus over the, which will be much more common places of actinic lichen planus. Exposed areas where sun exposure is much more. So face is the most important area where the sun exposure is much more, especially the forehead and the convexities of the face, the cheeks, nose. You will find lesions over the face. So some of them are bit violaceous. And some of them have a hypopigmented rim around the hyperpigmented lesion. So this is a case of actinic lichen planus. Then other clinical types of lichen planus according to their presentation. As the name suggests, annular means annular means annular. Just be batao, kisi bhi basha mein batao. Rim, ring like. There is clearance in the center. Central clearance is there in annular lesion. Other is the nimular lesions. Nimular are coin shaped. So central clearance is not there in nimular lesions. So annular variety of lichen planus. So it's a ring form of lichen planus. Usually such lesions are present in the genitalia. Buccal mucosa and the male genitalia. Then linear lesions are the zostriform lesions on extremities. As both of the names they suggest, it's a linear lesion. Linear and zostri form is how the term zostri form has come up. Okay, what does this term suggest? The terms are very important. Once you know the term, then classification becomes easy and the terms terminology becomes easy. So zostri form has come from the word zoster. Zoster is presentation. How? What is the typical presentation of zoster? Coiled. Mm -hmm. Zoster is different. Which type of distribution? Nerves means it's a unilateral distribution, mm -hmm. segmental what we call. So zoster form is half of the body. It involves one part of the body, or it covers from midline to midline on one side of the body it doesn't involve the other side of the body so such type of lesions we call it zostriform and linear and zostriform are not same linear is just linear it can cross the midline it can be anywhere of the body but usually we just equate these two terminologies vesicular and bullous as the name suggests you have already gone through the structure of skin and various types of lesions, anatomy of skin. So vesicular lesions are there or bullous lichen planus are is also there. So how to differentiate such types of lesion? Usually we read that the commonest type of lesion in lichen planus are what are the commonest lesions in lichen planus? What is as the according to the definition the commonest variety presents in form of flat topped, then color, violaceous. So these two things are very important. They are flat topped and violaceous. But once it's become vesicular or bullous, how to diagnose a case of lichen planus? Then the histopathology is very important. Okay, That was another factor in another important line in definition. So if you are not able to diagnose, then the histopathology will help you to diagnose. Then atrophic variety is resolution of annular or hypertrophic lesions with atrophic atrophy. 
erosive lesions usually in the mucal buccal mucosa you'll find erosive lesions there is a sort of superficial ulceration in oral mucosa that is a part of lichen planus and then follicular lichen planus so lichen plano pilar is what we call if the similar lesion involves the follicle then we call it lichen plano pilar is more common in women than in men and scarring alopecia may occur so such lesions in the scalp will lead to scarring alopecia so it will lead to alopecia and scarring alopecia means there is little chance of growth of hair so there are certain entities where alopecia with treatment recovers but these type of alopecia so this very important to diagnose on time so that the lesion doesn't involve the whole of the scalp because the chances of getting hair once it spreads are much less so just remember the important type of lichen planus uh, the commonest variety of lichen planus and its presentation no need to bother about this so many types of lichen planus but lichen planus this just suggests that it may involve any part of the body any type of lesion may be present it may be vesicular it may be bullous it may be hypertrophic it may be atrophic it may involve the follicles and lead to scarring alopecia if you remember the commonest type that is more than enough then oral lichen planus it's a reticular white layer white lace like pattern atrophic erosive like a erosive plaque so orally you will find a lace like pattern bit of violaceous in the oral mucosa especially the buccal mucosa genitalia we already read that usually in genitals especially males you will find annular lesions over the glands and nails are important you will find thin striated nails with pterygium so pterygium you will be able to know only once you see such type of nail but striations are much more common in nails in lichen planus what we call usually call with the term onychorhexis so no need to go into this terminology but remember the commonest finding that nail may be involved scalp may be involved and common presentation is a flat top lesions with violaceous appearance and itching so this is a picture of oral lichen planus classical lacy white pattern on the buccal mucosa so this is lichen planus in the oral mucosa so these things are very important because of the preponderance of oral cancers nowadays we have to differentiate this from leukoplakia so once a smoker is there or whatever etiopathogenesis is there so we have to rule out such lesions from oral cancers so such things may be missed by non dermatology people we are able to diagnose lichen planus but once it goes to the ent or other department they'll try to rule out leukoplakia so this but the lesions are very classical bit of violaceous and lace like pattern is there on the buccal mucosa similar lesion can be also visualized over the inner part of the lower lip So this is another picture of oral mucosa and this picture the classical lace like pattern is much more prominent so it's not a plaque like leukoplakia it's a reticular presentation whitish streaks are there a reticular reticular means mesh like net like presentation okay so it's not that uh, we are able to diagnose lichen planus clinically in such cases if he is a smoker or he has such uh, substance abuse that we have to take a biopsy to rule out lichen like uh, leukoplakia also but clinically the first differential diagnosis will be lichen planus and in cases of lichen planus the chances of carcinoma is much less then this is the penile lesion as we already discussed you will find annular lesions over the male genitalia so it's a annular violaceous plaque on the penile shaft so you can see a classical annular lesion over the genitalia so it has to be differentiated from commonly the first diagnosis in such cases would be 
तो आप लोग क्या डायग्नोस करोगे इसमें ब्लैक एंड प्लेनस तो आज शुरू हो रहा है कुछ तो कुछ तो बोलो दो तीन टर्म्स तो आते हैं आपको डर्मेटोलॉजी में उनमें से भी कुछ बोलो तीन या नहीं लगेगा इसमें आपको ये फंगल इन्फेक्शन हो रहा हो एनुलर लीजन विच इज द कॉमनेस्ट एनुलर लीजन दैट वी फाइंड इट्स दैट यू नो ऑफ देर आर सो मेनी बट यूजली इची एनुलर लीजन है स्केली लीजन है डर्मेटोफाइटोसिस तीन या क्रोरेस कॉर्पोरेस और वॉट एवर सो दिस मे बी दिस इज अ डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोस इन दिस के बट हियर यू फाइंड दैट द स्केल्स आर नॉट देयर सेंट्रल क्लियरेंस इज देयर इची दिस लीजन विल ऑल्सो बी इची एज इन केस ऑफ टीनिया बट दिस प्रेजेंस ऑफ सच लीजन ओनली ऑन द जेनाइटल शाफ्ट एंड नो अदर लीजन नो अदर प्लेस विल हेल्प इन डायग्नोसिंग ऑफ एनुलर लाइक एंड फेमस so biopsy is very important in certain cases we are not able to if we have differential diagnosis we are not able to pinpoint the diagnosis or we are not sure that this is lichen planus then this classical findings on histopathology is there hyperkeratosis focal wedge shaped hypergranulosis lichenthosis sort of so we'll not go into details of this this is another terminology totally different from what we see in undergraduate classes so this all you'll find in dermatology in post graduation so this is the histopathology which is classical of lichen planus now the differential diagnosis this is very important so once you have read this another entity that is lichen planus what all diagnosis in dermatology that you should differentiate this these, these lesions from one is disseminated eczema so in cases as i already we saw the case of acute lichen planus it was generalized all over the body itching was there and it was since many weeks so another one differential will be the disseminated dermatitis dermatitis or disseminated eczema so eczema is one of the commonest presentation in dermatology so this you have to differentiate from eczema but usually eczematous lesions are not that violaceous they will be more of red lesions inflamed itchy oozy lesions but oozing is not that common in lichen planus so this all you will see once you see cases in clinical posting scabies is another one where you will find papular itchy lesions you have to differentiate from scabies what are the common findings in scabies what are the classical findings in scabies we are just talking about classical presentations of these entities forget about the types of these lesions and the rare varieties scabies kis tarah diagnose karoge aap ne aapka ho chuka hai chapter scabies par kuch kuch to bolu khujli to hogi sabse pehle itching to aap bol diya karo dermatology kuch bhi puche to aap se 99% khujli to hogi hogi एक तो आपका करेक्ट हो ही जाएगा और क्या होता है कब होती है खुजली तो ये तो आना चाहिए इसके बीच फिर कहाँ का किसने लिया था लेक्चर मैंने लिया था बेकार गया लेक्चर फिर तो आपसे अभी तो वो तो डिटेल्स तो पूछ ही नहीं रहे सिर्फ एक प्रेजेंटेशन दैट इज डेफिनेशन डेफिनेशन में जो जो चीजें आती है इचिंग तक आप नहीं बता रहे हो फिर वापस से इसके बीच लास्ट टाइम डिस्कस करना पड़ेगा इचिंग कब होती है इसके बीच में ये तो आना चाहिए आपको इतने लेक्चर पूरे एक घंटे के बाद अगर दो चार पॉइंट्स नहीं आते हैं तो दैट इज यूजलेस और रिपीट करना चाहिए उसको ना किसी को नहीं पता है कि नाइट में ज्यादा होती है इसके बीच में इचिंग नेक्स्ट टाइम उसके बीच करेंगे आप पढ़ के आना ठीक है ना लेटेस्ट रिवाइज अदर लीजन जब तक आगे वो कॉमन ही नहीं आते तो आगे पढ़ने का लाइकन प्लेनस तो बहुत बड़ी बात होगी पर ये आपके करिकुलम में दे रखा है इसलिए पढ़ा रहे हैं आपको ना नहीं तो लास्ट टाइम तक आप कौन से बैच थे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ना नाइनटीन अच्छा आपका चलेगा कुछ भी पढ़ा सकते हैं आपको ना 
2020 से तो स्पेसिफिक हो गया इसके बीच में क्या पढ़ाना है दैट इज आल्सो मैं तो हम वी आर टीचिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द न्यू करिकुल उसमें क्या क्या आना चाहिए वो सारे हम कर दें ये तो आना ही चाहिए डर्मेटोलॉजी अदरवाइज आपके एग्जाम्स में क्या आएगा वी डोंट नो चार पांच शॉर्ट नोट्स आते हैं शायद कुछ ना बट स्केबीज इज इम्पॉर्टेंट स्केबीज ही आता है आता भी है तो पांच शॉर्ट नोट्स में से वन इज स्केबीज अदर इज सोरिया से नाइट इचिंग होती है इचिंग होती है नाइट में इचिंग होती है कहाँ पे होती है वॉट आर द कॉमन साइड्स ऑफ इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन स्केबीज स्केबीज होता किससे है वायरस है एक्टो एक्टोपेरासाइट है नेम ऑफ दिस एक्टोपेरासाइट नाम याद करो पूरा लेक्चर हो गया दो चार इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन तो आने चाहिए किससे होता है इसके बीच और क्या होता है इसमें डेफिनेशन एंड द कॉस्टिव ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट्स इट इतना तो बनता है कहाँ पे लीजन होते हैं क्या क्लासिकल लीजन होता है इसके बीच में पढ़ के बता दो नोट्स बनाए ना आपने नोट्स बनाते हो कहाँ कहाँ आएंगे ये नोट इधर ही देख लिया करो एक बार डेफिनेशन लिख लो बस बहुत है इतना तो उसको ही बार बार पढ़ लो क्लासिकल जो मैं बार बार क्लासिकल क्लासिकल कह रहा हूँ दो चार लाइनें लिखनी है बस दैट इज मोर देन इनफ क्या क्लासिकल रीजन है इसके बीच में इच्छी पेप्यूल्स होते हैं अदर डायग्नोस्टिक फाइंडिंग इज बरोज होते हैं वेब स्पेस में यूल फाइंड बरोज इन केसेस ऑफ के बीच इच्छी लीजेंस होंगे पेपुलर लीजेंस होंगे एक्सपोरियटेड लीजेंस होंगे मेनली ओवर द वेब स्पेस जेनेटेलिया विद सर्कल ऑफ हेब्रा सो इट इन्वॉल्व द वेब स्पेस द रिस्ट एक्जिला ब्रेस्ट अम्बलिकल रीजन जेनेटेलिया सो दिस कवर्स अ होल ऑफ सर्कल सो दीज आर द कॉमनेस्ट साइट साइट्स इन्वॉल्व बाय दिस माइट विच कॉजेज मच मोर रिचिंग एट नाइट पेपुलर रीजन्स आर देयर एंड इट्स अक्टो पेरिसेंट ड्रग इप्शंस सर्टन ड्रग इप्शंस मे बी कन्फ्यूज विथ लाइक एन प्लेनस सो सर्टन सम ऑफ दैम आर वायलेशियस ऑन अपियरेंस सो सच टाइप्स ऑफ रीजन्स वी कॉल इज लाइक एन ऑयडल लाइक एन प्लेनस इज अ क्लासिकल एंटिटी सिमिलर टू लाइक एन प्लेनस ऑल अदर्स आर लाइक एन ऑयडल वेयर द हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी इज दैट ऑफ लाइक एन प्लेनस सो सर्टन ड्रग रिएक्शंस आर सिमिलर टू लाइक एन प्लेनस वॉट वी कॉल इज लाइक एन ऑयडल ड्रग रिएक्शंस पिटीरियस इज रोजिया Psoriasis, it has to be differentiated from psoriasis also if the scales are not that silvery. Once you are treating a case of psoriasis, all the scales will disappear, and the lesion will remain. It may appear to be little erythematous to violation. So psoriasis or lichen planus, को कैसे differentiate करोगे? जो जो पता है वो बताओ और कुछ तो बोलो. अभी तो डिस्कस हो गया दोनों का डिफरेंस कुछ भी बोल सकते हो गलत होगा तो गलत होगा अभी क्या होगा वायलेशियस टिंज होगा वायलेशियस सोरियासिस में नहीं होगा एरिडमेटस होगा रेडिश होगा और हाँ स्केल्स विल बी मच मोर इन सोरियासिस विच आर सिल्वरी वाइट स्केल्स स्केल्स आर नॉट दैट प्रोमिनेंट इन Lichen planus. There may be scaling in lichen planus also. Irritated lichen planus, as such. But commonly, we are talking about the common presentation, the commonest type of lichen planus. It will be. Or surface. Bolu. Extensors pe lichen planus ulta bata re. फ्लेक्चरल ज्यादा होगा एक्सटेंसर्स इज सोरियासिस डिसेमिनेटेड बोथ ऑफ देम आर बोथ एक्सटेंसर्स एंड दिस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ क्लासिकल इनिशियल प्रेजेंटेशन 
over the extensors in psoriasis and usually the volar aspect in cases of lichen planus then now we to itni sari baatein oral lesion oral mein white lacy pattern will be there in lichen planus psoriasis mein oral lesions are not that common and usually itching is much more common in psoriasis patient scratches the scales and there is pinpoint bleeding also so there is no bleeding in cases of lichen planus in lichen planus usually the patient rubs they don't scratch this is another important finding that you if you ask the patient how you itch they will say they will usually rub the lesion they will not scratch the lesion scales are there they will try to remove the scales here scales are not there these lesions are flat also so they just rub to rigo nodular arrays so nodular lesions will not go into these because abhi to ye aapke hue hi nahi hai cover mein jo cover ho gaye hain uska we'll just discuss the differential secondary syphilis mucosal lesion you have to differentiate from candidiasis this is one of the common differential diagnosis in cases of oral mucosal involvement so candidiasis rule out karo ki whitish candidiasis mein bhi it appears whitish so white then leukoplakia and pemphigus in another disease which we'll discuss later on so you have to differentiate from these lesions because the treatment of all these are different the prognosis is different so coming to the treatment part lichen planus is self limiting disease that usually resolves within 8 to 12 months and topically you will give calamine lotion steroid cyclosporine tacrolimab so usually it's not that uh, self limiting but patient is concerned about the lesions which lesions are there flat top then usually these lesions heal with hyperpigmentation that is of more concern so ek baar theek ho jate hain to bhi wahan kala nishan chhod jate hain that last for a very long time so better to treat the patient self limiting karke usko chhod denge to jo pigmentation bhi 5 6 saal aur rahega so better to treat the patient so uh, so that the lesions don't spread and so that the pigmentation is much less than if not treated usually we use topical steroids and tacrolimus systemic we give antihistamine because of the itching steroids dapsone grisofulvin retinoids the treatment of acute widespread lichen planus so if the lesions are acute and widespread usually such lesions will not improve with topical application aap kitna steroid lagaoge body pe usually such cases where the lesions are widespread we should go for oral steroids oral treatment so that it reaches every part of the body so usually we give prednisolone ka dose kya hai it's 0.5 to 1 mg per kg this is a universal dosage in most of the diseases over few weeks for symptomatic control and rapid resolution monitoring of side effects and judicious use is recommended what are the side effects of oral steroids corticosteroids kya cheeze hame dhyan rakhni hai oral steroids de rahe ho aap to kya bol rahe ho bahut sare hain kya cheez ek ek bolo zor se bolo पता है आपको ऐसे नथिंग अनयूजल या ऐसा कुछ बहुत ही रेयर साइड इफेक्ट्स नहीं है टॉपिकल एंड ओरल कॉर्टिकोस्टोराइड्स आर द मोस्ट कॉमन इंग्रेडिएंट ऑफ एनी प्रिस्क्रिप्शन एंड उसके साइड इफेक्ट्स आर आल्सो शुड एवरीबॉडी शुड नो द साइड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ओरल कॉर्टिकोस्टोराइड्स स्किन पे बताओ सिस्टमिक बताओ आपको पता है एक दुक्का तो आते ही होंगे दस पंद्रह नहीं वी आई पीज बताए फर्स्ट बेंच वाले कोई ओरल कैंडिडिया क्यों होता है ओरल कैंडिडिया इम्यूनिटी कम हो जाती है बिकॉज ऑफ इट लीड्स टू डिक्रीज ऑफ इम्यूनिटी और इम्यूनो सप्रेशन विच लीड्स टू इन्फेक्शन इन्फेक्शन वन ऑफ द इन्फेक्शन कॉमनेस्ट इन्फेक्शन इज ओरल कैंडिडिया और कौन से इन्फेक्शन हो सकते हैं Hmm? कोई भी इन्फेक्शन हो सकता है तो स्पेसिफिक थोड़ी है वायरल भी हो सकते हैं बैक्टीरियल भी हो सकते हैं बिकॉज इम्यूनिटी इज लेस 
so bacterial infections viral infections are common fungal infections are common or infections ke siwa steroid kya kar rahe bolo galat hoga aur kya hoga hyperglycemia so steroid leads to in long run may precipitate diabetes तो उसमें आपको हमेशा दो चीजें देखते रहना है एक तो ब्लड प्रेशर एक ब्लड शुगर लेवल ठीक है ना आप स्टीरॉयड लॉन्ग टर्म दे रहे हो हाई डोज दे रहे हो यू टू वॉच फॉर हाइपरटेंशन टेंशन उस पर देखते रहो ब्लड प्रेशर तो नहीं बढ़ रहा दूसरा ब्लड शुगर भी बढ़ने के चांसेस है और स्किन में क्या क्या करता है टॉपिकल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्टीरॉइड लीड टू पिगमेंटेशन जो से बोलो कुछ याद आ रहा है तो बोलो उसको दबा के नहीं रखो क्रशिंग सिंड्रोम ओरल से होता है टॉपिकल से नहीं ओरल ही देते रहेंगे लॉन्ग टर्म तो देर में भी इफ लॉन्ग टर्म यूज ऑफ ओरल कॉटिकोस्टोराइड लू टू क्रशिंग सिंड्रोम क्रशिंग सिंड्रोम में क्या होता है क्या होता है स्ट्राइशन हो जाते हैं दैट इज स्ट्राया बिकॉज ऑफ अट्रॉफी ऑफ दिस अट्रॉफी के कारण स्ट्राया हो जाएंगे देन बफेलो हम्प टाइप हम्प इज क्रिएटेड देन मून लाइक फेस इज देयर सो दिस फेस इज इज टिपिकल ऑफ अ लॉन्ग टर्म ओरल स्टीरॉयड इनटेक ठीक है ये पढ़ के आना आप लोग इज वेरी कॉमन क्वेश्चन एंड एवरीबडी शुड नो द यूज द साइड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ कॉर्टिकोस्टीरॉयड वो टॉपिकल एंड ओरल कॉर्टिकोस्टीरॉयड then mild cases and localized lesion antihistamines and topical steroids like fluoxetine and betamethasone then hypertrophic lichen planus so if it's hypertrophy is there we have to reduce the hypertrophy so a potent corticosteroid is used and the most potent is clobetazone propionate then application of steroids is not that easy to apply twice a day for a very long time so what we usually give in the hypertrophic like in planus is intralegional steroid we just instill the steroid in the lesion and that works for more than 3 to 4 weeks so single injection will work for it's a long acting slow released releasing injection so it increases the compliance it's very difficult to apply a cream twice a day for one month two month so better to go for intralegional injection of trimcinolon then oral like in planus topical steroids in ora based tecrolimus cyclosporine systemic steroids and dapsone what are the prognosis and complications in case of lichen planus so lesion resolves with pigmentation that may last for many months so this is the dreaded complication in even in treated cases of lichen planus it will lead to hyperpigmentation so if it's generalized all over the body it will lead to hyperpigmented patches all over the body if it's on the face it will lead to pigmentation over the face so better to treat the patient as soon as possible with the best treatment available with proper compliance so that we are not we are able to arrest the spread of lesion and chances of hyperpigmentation is much less recurrent episodes can occur oral lesions may be pre malignant so these are it's not that you diagnose like oral lichen planus and it will not be malignant it is less malignant than leukoplakia but it has a malignancy potential and the dreaded of all of them is scarring alopecia if it involves the follicular region then follicular lichen planus will lead to scarring over the scalp and alopecia which is difficult to cure thank you